let's hit this off. This is great. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. I just want to say thank you to everyone who is here. Thank you to those of us joining on the live stream. Hopefully you are comfortable in your pajamas, snacks, beverages, pets close by. And I just want to start by introducing myself. It's a good way to begin. Uh, my name is Carrie Michaels. My pronouns are she and her. I am an executive vice president for the BC General Employees Union, and I'm also a co-lead for GVAT's Housing Action Research Team, and I will be one of the MCs for tonight. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Chalan. My pronouns are she, her, and I am also a member of GVAT's Greater Victoria Acting Together Housing Research Team. Uh, and a member of Neighborhood Solidarity with Unhoused Neighbors, and I'm happy to be here co emceeing with Carrie tonight. Great. And uh, forgive us, uh, at least for me, this is my first in-person stage event in a couple years, so uh, I'm still getting used to being around uh, other human beings. Um, but uh, we are, yeah, really excited for tonight. Uh, the first thing I want to do is invite uh, Stephen Tyler to come up. Stephen is a board member for Greater Victoria Acting Together, and he is going to acknowledge the territory. Wow, great to see all you people out there. I'm uh, a member of GVAT representing Broadview United Church. And as we prepare to focus on issues of housing affordability in our communities, I want to take a moment to pause and remind ourselves that we meet this evening on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen people. And that when we talk about housing in this region, we're talking about the lands of the Wasainich and Nuchalnuk peoples represented today by the Sartlip, Tsawut, Pakuten, Tsekum, Malahat, Sianu, Suk, and Pachida nations. We can only honor the continuing relationship that First Nations have with these lands by acknowledging it out loud. So to acknowledge Lekwungen territory is to recognize that people have lived in this place for countless generations, stewarding the resources, developing a sophisticated culture, and building rich relationships with the surrounding nations, with the forests, with the plants and animals of the land and the sea. All explained in familiar stories handed down generation after generation long before settlers arrived. To acknowledge Lekwungen territory is also to recognize a more recent history of colonization, systemic racism, and genocide. Those words make us feel uncomfortable, but we should feel uncomfortable. We can only reconcile with First Nations by confronting that past. So I acknowledge that we have Songhees and Esquimalt reserves today because the settlers forced the Lekwungen people to abandon their villages by the inner harbor. They desecrated their sacred spaces and burial grounds and destroyed their food harvesting areas. I've chosen to call this place my home, but I'm troubled by that past. And I acknowledge, I admit, that I am an uninvited settler on lands that were never formally ceded. The Lekwungen say, Natsamat, we are all one. But each of us has some responsibility for moving towards that unity and reconciliation. And so I'd respectfully encourage each of us here to become more familiar with the recommendations for action 
of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission prepared seven years ago. And with United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People adopted by the government of British Columbia. And finally, if, if you have not done so already, I'd encourage you to join uh, the cultural tour, the Songhees cultural tour of the Inner Harbor from their kiosk at Ship Point. I can say firsthand that it's informative, fun, and you learn a few Lekwungen words too. So thank you for your attention. Haishka Siem. Okay, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. And after that thoughtful and very sincere acknowledgement of the land that we're on, I also want to thank the folks who came, who it took a little bit of courage to show up here uh, in this building tonight, who it may be uncomfortable for people to just, just to be in a venue like this. Welcome to the Greater Victoria's first Homes for All Community Assembly. Yeah, yeah. We're here tonight because everyone deserves a home within their community. Let me try to put that into perspective for you. In Greater Victoria, there's over 21,000 households in housing precarity, just in our region. So if we wanted to gather all, everyone together, and do a you know, city consultation with them on, on a housing strategy. We, they wouldn't, we wouldn't all fit in this venue. We wouldn't be able to rent out the Royal Theatre and fit everyone there. Even our larger venues, uh, the Save on Foods Memorial Arena, wouldn't fit everyone who is in housing crisis in Greater Victoria today. We would have to go to Vancouver and rent Rogers Arena. So this is to give you a sense of the scale of the issue that we want to inspire. We want to inspire actions that meet the scale of the issue that we're grappling with. So tonight we're asking mayoral candidates to embrace a human rights approach to housing and to greatly accelerate the development of nonprofit housing in our region. Here's how the evening's going to unfold. My co MC Carrie, she's going to provide some background on Greater Victoria acting together. You're going to get a chance to know who the members are of this organization. Then, three storytellers, people who live in our region who have first hand experience with the housing crisis, are going to come up here and bravely take the mic and let you know how it's going. And then, last but not least, we'll share with you the Greater Victoria Acting Together's housing platform and invite the mayoral candidates to the front to comment. We promise to have you out of here by 8.30 p.m. We've been talking about Greater Victoria acting together and some of us may be members of organizations that are part of Greater Victoria acting together, um, but you may not know a lot about what Greater Victoria acting together is and, and what we do um, and how we work. And we wanted to really um, bring that into this room because it demonstrates the kind of power that we as a collective can hold when we, when we work together in this way. So GVAT is a nonpartisan organization made up of organizations, and it's member-driven. We are committed to working for the common good. We are dozens of unions, faith groups, community groups, student groups, environmental groups, all working together towards shared priorities to make life better for everyone in Greater Victoria. And so we are volunteers, 
we work with what's called a research action team on specific topics and issues such as mental health and addictions, housing, which is what we're here tonight. And in fact, all of our housing or all of our research action teams intersect on the issue of housing in this way. And we also have a research action team on uh, climate change and climate justice. And we use our knowledge, our skills, and our experience to, uh, to come together and to plan, to listen, to plan actions, and to build a better world. Through GVAT, through our organization of organizations, we develop, identify, and nurture leaders within our organizations. We build our capacity to make bigger and more impactful changes in our communities and to continue the work that we do on a bigger and bolder scale. So this is just one step in what we know we can accomplish together if we're all working together to build that collective power. I'm going to turn it back to Nicole. Thanks. Okay, so some of you may not know how many people in organizations actually uh, contributed to the development of the Homes for All platform and assembly. So our reps are going to quickly come up. They're going to bring their banners to the front one at a time. They're going to introduce themselves with pride and enthusiasm, state their name, their organization, and the number, the number of members they have. We're going to ask everyone to keep their mask on, but project their voice. Oh, details. My name is Susan Lang. I represent First Unitarian Church of Victoria, and we have about 350 members. Yeah, come on! <laughs> I'm Ruthie, I represent Congregation Emmanuel, and we have something like 260 family units. Hi, I'm Colleen Sparks with the Mustard Seed, and we support the 45,000 food insecure individuals within the Victoria region. I'm Amy Lee Radigan with the Camosun College Student Society, and we have 9,000 members. I'm Deacon Bridget McKenzie. I represent the BC Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. We have about 200 members on the island, and we are about 3,000 scattered across the province in 45 congregations. Hi everyone, I'm Brendan Nielsen, the delegate from the Anglican Diocese of Islands and Inlets. We have about 4,500 uh, people across Vancouver Island, half of which are in Greater Victoria. Hi, my name is Hannah Park, and I represent Broadview United Church, and we have about over 600 individual members in Greater Victoria. <laughs> Broadview is here. I'm Sister Joyce Harris, the sister of St. Anne, and we are a small but mighty group of 25 in Victoria and over 250 across Canada. Hello, my name is Savannah Barrett, and I'm proudly here representing Climate Justice Victoria, who has about 450 members in so-called Victoria region. Thanks. Hi, it's Nate. My name is Leslie Saxon. I'm with Holy Cross Catholic Parish here in Victoria, and we have about 300 members. Hello, my name is Stephen Hurst. I'm representing the Victoria Kool-Aid Society. 
We're a nonprofit housing and health services provider. Uh, we have about 380 staff, and last year we served over 12,000 clients. Good evening. My name is Terry Edison Brown, and I'm the house director of the Anawim Companion Society. We have a membership of around 30 people, and we serve 400 per year, those living in poverty. Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, John McLaren, and uh, proud to represent the community of the Anglican Church of St. John the Divine uh, in Victoria. We have 250 uh, members of our organization. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Bullock, uh, representing the Church of Truth in Victoria, also small but mighty. 30 members and about 200 friends of the church. Hello, my name is Tricia Sanders and I represent Fairfield United and we have 50 members active in our church at this moment. Our Place Society serves thousands of the most vulnerable people in our region. My name is James Kikola. I'm here representing the Sierra Club of BC. We represent 539 members across the region and thousands of more supporters. Thank you. Buenos Aires. My name is Joe Kalenda, representing St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church. We have just shy of 650 households, and all of us, we hear the cry of the poor. Good evening, my name is Aaron Severs, and I'm here representing Unite Here Local 40, and we represent 500 members. Good evening, I'm Patty Lane, and I'm here representing any of you who would like to join GVAT, <laughs> who don't have an organizational home that's ready to join. And so if you're an individual and you're not tightly affiliated to a group, there's a home for you with us. Hi, I'm Tag. Today I'm with the Threshold Housing Society, and we have about 30 members. Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Clark, and I'm a member and representing the BC General Employees Union. And we have 17,000 members throughout Greater Victoria who are gonna put a lot of pressure on everybody that could make a difference to affordable housing in this region. Thank you. Okay, thank you members for showing up. Everyone, let's give them a big round of applause. This is what grassroots organizing looks like. You could walk down the center and then back to Ruby if you like. Lead the way, Eric. Parade. It's a parade. Okay, great. You've just met. Now you have a really good sense of who and what Greater Victoria acting together really is all about. It's about all of these churches and unions and nonprofits coming together and figuring out how to speak with one strong, clear voice. Um, we also want to take a minute to just recognize, uh, thank our MLA, Grace Lohr is here tonight. So thank you for showing up, Grace. We may have other elected officials here. 
thank you also. We also have several allied organizations uh, present tonight, the Neighborhood Solidarity with Unhoused Neighbors, Together Against Poverty Society, the UVEC Student Society, and First Metropolitan Church. Thank you for showing up. I've been told we have 50 people watching the live stream from home, so hooray to you guys for watching. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Uh, and also, we have uh, we we opened we made sure the through our public promotions that all candidates who are vying for council seats tonight knew that they were welcome to come. So there are many candidates here, and you'll have a chance to mingle with them after the event. And finally, I want to acknowledge and thank our mayoral candidates who showed up tonight. We've got uh, Dean Murdoch and Fred Haynes from Saanich. Marianne Alto and Stephen Andrew from Victoria, Barb Desjardins and Sonia Gracie for Esquimalt. Okay, now we officially begin. We're just going to keep telling you that we're going to begin, but this is actually a night of never-ending uh, introductions. <laughs> uh, we, I think Nicole perfectly put in perspective just the size of a crisis we are in. It is becoming almost rote to call it a housing crisis. It's been over a decade of housing being unaffordable for even just the average working person, and it's just getting more and more out of reach to be able to find a secure and stable home and a place that's safe for us to live in. And it's critical uh, for us to take immediate action to find solutions that uh, work, that will be uh, impactful for the most needy, but also the greatest amount of us. And collectively, we are experiencing the devastating impacts of housing unaffordability, even if each of our unique experiences is our own individual experience. So my issue with housing may not be your issue with housing, but we're all experiencing this, whether it's our own issue or someone who's close to us, someone we know, someone we work with. I think any one of us could, in this room, identify someone who's either lost their housing or is at risk of losing their housing. And so we have some uh, amazing people who have agreed to share their stories of how housing has impacted their lives, the lack of housing, the lack of stable, safe, and affordable housing, and not just their individual lives, but their families' lives. And so our first uh, person sharing their story tonight is Lauren. Uh, Lauren is a Victoria resident and a single mom who's finishing her bachelor's in business administration degree, and she works in human resources and she's here to share how this crisis has impacted her and her family. Thank you, Lauren. And, and me. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you so much all for being here tonight. It's a great cause. We really appreciate the support. Take that down for a minute. <laughs> so my name is Lauren Blakey. I'm a single mom of two wonderful boys. Dayton is 10 and Caius is 5. I moved from Calgary to Victoria to study political science in 2008. I met my kid's dad in college. It is becoming very difficult and expensive to live in Victoria. If I didn't have kids, I would just probably move back to Calgary where things are a lot more affordable. But the heartbreaking choice to move my kids away from their dad and his entire family makes that kind of an impossible one. When I first got here 14 years ago, I rented an apartment in Oak Bay for a very reasonable $500 a month. I've recently moved into a new small house, literally yesterday, <laughs> because my previous landlord lived a party lifestyle that was disruptive to my children and I. And that lifestyle attracted some questionable people 
who hung out in my backyard day and night. I never really felt any privacy in that place. Another truth that I was afraid to talk about before moving into a new home is that a few years ago, my landlord insisted that I pay him extra money every month, in addition to the agreed upon rent stated in my lease. He couldn't legally do that, but he could do that because of the housing crisis we live in. He threatened to kick me out if I didn't pay. And in this market, I figured it was better to keep a roof over my kid's head. And as he was in a power position, I just went ahead and paid it. He was also very reluctant to fix anything, sometimes for months or even years, if at all. My bathroom floor had black mold on it for an entire year before he finally talked a friend into coming to rip it up and fix it. Um, I'm grateful to have moved into this new safer house for my family and I. We're really excited to be there. However, we're gonna have to make quite a few sacrifices to afford the additional rent. This house is seven times what that apartment in Oak Bay cost when I first moved here. It's only been 10 years, 12. <laughs> and you know, we are safer now. We're happy to like be in this house, but having to pay insane rental prices in this city makes us a lot more economically vulnerable and makes the dream of home ownership seem even further out of reach. My parents bought their first house in Calgary in 1989. They paid $95,000 for it. I've had the down payment on a $95,000 house several times in my lifetime. We're, n we're never gonna buy anything like that here. You can't even buy land for that in this city. It's too bad we live in a city where choices have been made that put so many of our citizens in an economically vulnerable position. We live in a city that is limiting our future and is limiting the future of our children. There is some incredible wealth in Victoria, but the low vacancy rates and astronomical rent prices keep a lot of us farther and farther from it. There must be a better way than this. I hope you will join the fight for better solutions. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, what a story. Uh, the truth I was afraid to talk about is uh, a good sentence that actually encapsulates that same experience that so many renters in our community go through, which is not asking for repairs to be done because they're afraid of the rent being raised. Uh, and also, the, a shortage of affordable purpose-built housing that we have has created these horrible conditions for exploitation. Uh, it sounds like some sort of housing crisis levy that you had to pay to your former landlord. Our next speaker, Matthew Cook, has his own story of housing precarity. He's a registered social worker and member of BCGEU. He's worked with people who've been experiencing homelessness, mental health, and addictions for the past 10 years. Uh, his wife, Jessica, and two young children have been putting up with him for about 10 years. <laughs> Come on up, Matthew. Am I live? I'm live. Thank you. As a social worker in this city, I have seen the housing crisis from near every angle, and from every angle it is ugly. I work in mental health, and I know and I have seen how mental health is bound up with housing. How the chronic stress of homelessness eats away at whatever threads of sanity one has managed to preserve in the daily fight to keep one's dignity on the streets. And I know that housing is the first essential ingredient toward recovering that dignity. I took the job of a housing outreach worker in 2013. Back then, it was not impossible to find a one bedroom for $600, bachelor at least. Um, in 2015, in 2016, I did outreach to the tenth city that formed in front of this cathedral. And 2017 was when my family and I were rent evicted out of Oak Bay. In my time as an outreach worker, I have watched the rental market evaporate for my clients, and then the market swallowed up my family's home. We landed in a smaller space at a higher rent and made do. Four years later, BC Housing called. 
My family and I now reside in a townhouse within the CRD Housing Corporation. We are charged 30% of our income that goes into the public purse as opposed to the private pocket. Every day is one day removed from the anxiety of staring into the abyss of impossibly high rental rates. I won the lottery, but why should it be a lottery? This should be the common standard for all in a country as affluent as Canada, in a province as affluent as British Columbia. I'm here to fight for that. Housing for all. Thank you, Matthew. I think my volume should be a little better now. I think I shattered some eardrums out there, so I apologize. Uh, unfortunately, Matthew, I feel like your story of renovation is something many of us are all too familiar with or know someone uh, who has experienced renovation themselves. And if it's not a renovation, it's some other form of bad faith eviction, just so the landlord can increase that rent uh, to charge what other landlords are charging. Because, you know, long-term tenants have uh, some of the lowest rents until they're forced to move. And then we often see we're paying hundreds of dollars more per month for whatever new uh, place we're able to, to find. And it's so rare to hear stories like yours, people who have successfully been able to enter into social housing and find that stability and, and family housing. And it goes to show just how necessary and life-changing it is to have access to nonprofit housing, not just in order to live, but in order to thrive. And this is what we desire for our communities across Greater Victoria and beyond. Um, and this is what we're striving for and what we're fighting for. Our final speaker tonight, I have the uh, pleasure of introducing Bernice Kamano, who has lived in Lekwungen territory for over 20 years and is a member, and I apologize, <laughs> Uh, the Kwak Kwak Waka Nation. Thank you. Um, you'll say it uh, for everyone. And the uh, Haltsuk relations, or with Haltsuk Halt Halt relations. Uh, an active community member, Bernice was one of the first legal advocates trained by Together Against Poverty Society. Uh, she's also worked as a Native Employment Counselor for United Native Nations and was a founding member of the Makola Housing Society, which has since gone on to create housing from Victoria to Alert Bay. And she continues her work today as an Indigenous outreach worker, supporting Indigenous people experiencing homelessness and in transition, from helping them access safe healthcare services or simply providing a friendly face or hug when needed. Uh, thank you, Bernice, for sharing your story with us tonight. And please welcome Bernice. Okay. That's, I can't see my, okay, is that good? Um, Gayla Kessler. Gayla Kessler, my name is Bernice Camano. Um, I am uh, from the Kwakwakiwak Nation on my mother's side. And then on, on my father's side, I'm Helsick from Bella Bella. So I'm going to start off this evening by sharing my story because my story relates to uh, the majority of the indigenous homeless people that you see on the street. So my story started out when I was nine months old. Um, I was sick, and my mother took me to the hospital. And so what happened when I arrived at the hospital is that they looked at my mother, and they looked at me, and uh, they made the decision that my mother wasn't fit. So they took me out of my mother's arms and put me in foster care. 
Um, as I mentioned, this is a, a, a common um, reality for the majority of the homeless community that I work with. When I first started out on the street, I did ask people, because I wanted to identify who was out there, what nation they were from, um, what was their history. The two questions I did ask them, uh, what nation are you from, and did you uh, live in foster care, or did you attend residential school? And pretty much everyone that I spoke to, and that was originally over 200 people that I interviewed, they were either residential school, foster care, or both. So what does that look like? So that looks like um, people that have grown up, and as we all know, we celebrated September 30th, where we had an opportunity to understand what um, uh, residential school was. I am not a residential school survivor. My grandfather actually helped build the residential school in Alert Bay. My father attended that residential school in Alert Bay, and my mother went to residential school in um, uh, the Seashell Peninsula. You have to bear with me a little bit. I'm a little bit, this is a difficult story to share. So, what does that look like? That looks like the majority of the people that live on the street are from foster care. Their families, generations are from that. So what, what I'm looking at is people that don't have, I mean, you can call your auntie, you can call your uncle, your grandma, stuff like that. The people living on the, on the streets don't have that connection, and so it creates problems as you see. Um, um, yeah, sorry, thank you. Um, as you understand, the problems of homelessness uh, in our community is complex. It's multi-layered. Um, colonization, residential school, genocide, and racism. The one thing that I do want to share with you is intergenerational trauma, which is something that I walk in daily and the people I work with uh, daily. Um, we have a lot of healing to do um, in our community. So this is not only about homes, it's about dressing all the ways our colonized history, ongoing systemic racism need to be confronted and repaired. Uh, we need to bring support, some healing to everyone um, that we are, that I work with on the streets. So it is doable. Um, it is a broken system, but I think if we all come together, and that's why we're here, to come together we can look at solutions to make this different. Um, one of the things, I'm gonna share a story with you about um, kind of the work that I do and, and how it affects the people that I work with. I was um, walking in front of our place one day and, and one of the young ladies that I work with saw me and I looked at her and she started running away from me and I said, I'm, I'm going to call her uh, Blanche. I'm going to say, what are you doing? And, and she was really, really embarrassed because she was drinking, and she didn't want me to see that because I've been in recovery for over 12 years, and she knew that, and she was ashamed. So what I, what I, the reason why I shared that story with you is because we have to understand what it looks like out there for people. You know, the people that have been um, damaged and broken by this system. And as I, as I mentioned, uh, <laughs> I'm here to share and to um, um, hope that we can work together to come up with solutions to make a difference in the indigenous homeless community that I work with. 
Um, at the last um, homeless count, which I believe was done in 2020, uh, the count was, what, over 1,700. So of that 1,700, 33% are indigenous. We are only 4% of society. So um, I just want to um, share with you, um, as I stand in front of you, sharing the story that I did about my childhood and the trauma that I walk in, I also want you to know that an am I am an amazing, resilient woman. And I have... Uh, I have overcome so much trauma, and I still walk in trauma. I, I always will to the day I die. My job on the street is to look at the indigenous people out there and just, if they need a hug, I hug them, you know. And I'm not a normal, I guess, outreach worker. I don't think you're allowed to do that at other agencies. And if they need lunch, I take them to lunch. Whatever they need, I'm there for them. And I think that uh, with the understanding and us working together, we can make a difference. Gayla Kessler, thank you. Thank you, Bernice, for sharing your story, for your courage, and thank you for the work that you do every day in Victoria. Bernice's story really brings to life the work of Jesse Thistle, a Métis scholar, and he, he himself experienced homelessness. He spent two years consulting uh, about 200 uh, different Indigenous uh, people and communities to create something called the Indigenous Definition of Homelessness. Uh, please do Google it to continue your learning about this. The um, Indigenous Definition of Homelessness recognizes that homelessness is caused uh, by colonialism enacted by current government policies such as the Child Welfare System and the Indian Act. The definition also recognizes that for Indigenous people, homelessness means more, as Bernice said, than not having a home. It means separation from land, separation from your language, separation from your culture and your people. And this is both a cause and a consequence of Indigenous homelessness. So whoever is elected mayor on October 15th will have the power to vote on decisions that affect the day-to-day -day lives of people who are experiencing homelessness in Greater Victoria. That power is an opportunity for actions towards reconciliation. We would do well to remember this bell hooks quote. When we choose to love, we choose to move against fear, against alienation, and against separation. One thing that is unique about Greater Victoria Acting Together's housing platform is the strong emphasis on homelessness, on homes for all. This platform was created through consultation with many, many, many organizations and subject matter uh, experts. So with that all said, Let's turn our attention to the platform now. All right, and then we're going to get it up on the big screen here, but I believe we also had copies available. Yes, I am getting nods. We had copies available for folks. And did you take the Copy. Someone stole my copy of the... <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Yes. Can I just use your copy then? I don't have a copy. No, I just meant your thing. Okay, great. And just to check in, folks on the live stream, 
Hope you're enjoying the evening as well. Feel free to share photos of your pets and tag GVAT. I will be going through those after the event and appreciating everyone's furry family members. And children are also welcome. Uh, if you share photos of your children, uh, they are adorable. Uh, okay, so, I thought you had it. No. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. So, the Homes for All Municipal uh, Policy Platform, I knew if I stalled long enough, we'd yeah. get one. Yeah. Someone, Sonia's on top of things, thank you. Uh, so, the GVAT Homes for All Municipal Policy Platform, uh, the, there's uh, a number of planks in this platform. The first is to build thousands of new units of climate-friendly, non-profit, affordable housing, uh, which includes things like ensuring that there is a delegated and streamlined approval process for non-profit and cooperative housing proposals. Uh, we're uh, putting together uh, parcels of land to then build nonprofit housing on and to make sure that uh, projects are located near major transit routes and uh, cycling infrastructure so that people can get to the places they need and we are creating low carbon communities. Great. Thank you, Carrie. And the second main point in a GVAT's housing platform is to house people currently unhoused. Right. Yeah. That is consistent with a human rights approach. Uh, we are asking mayoral candidates to contribute more funding for housing solutions across the region through the CRD to promote and approve well-located supportive housing that offers dignity and choice for its residents. And we're also asking the mayoral candidates tonight to press the province for increased funding for housing and person-centered care, or funding for healing, as Bernice says. Excellent. The third is to have better protections for tenants now. Too many tenants are being displaced and being forced into higher uh, rents, higher cost housing, and so we need to make sure that tenants have protections before redevelopment happens if they are having a renovated uh, building that they can return to a unit at the same rent that they were paying uh, with the allowable increases. And the final piece in the platform, affordable new construction while protecting existing rental stock, such as incentives for developers to include uh, below market, meaningful levels of below market and meaningful proportions of below market homes in new residential construction. And just to emphasize, to do this without displacing people to homelessness or other municipalities. And we do have a couple additional municipal, municipal specific policies, which we will note. The candidates have all seen this before now, yes. by the way. Just not to break the drama uh, for you. But. Okay, so for the uh, specifically District of Saanich, Esquimalt, and Oak Bay, take notes. <laughs> uh, as Victoria has done, amend your bylaws to prevent conversion to condominiums of existing rental buildings without replacement rental units. Oh, and I'll do the next one. Uh, and in Victoria and Esquimalt, as Saanich and Oak Bay have done, amend bylaws to allow both a secondary suite and a border. A border B-O-A-R-D-E-R, -E uh, in existing R1 zones. That is the platform that we have collectively come up with that will advance uh, the affordability of housing, protect already affordable housing rather than losing that. 
<laughs> for those on the live stream, you don't, you don't get to appreciate this, but the uh, banners have fallen over and created quite the cacophony. It's great drama. I promised you drama, and we delivered. <laughs> All right. So at this point, we are going to ask the mayor candidates to come up. We'll be going uh, by municipality. Uh, from greatest population to uh, least. So we'll be starting with Saanich, and then Victoria, and then Esquimalt. And then uh, we do want to note, uh, we um, had, a... sorry, stage, stage changing, set changeover. We did have a wardrobe change, but we had to cut that from the program for time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, wait for the musical number we're going to close with. You're going to love it. Uh, and you're going to join in. Um, we did have uh, Mayor Murdoch was going to be joining us uh, this evening, but unfortunately has had to miss the event due to an unforeseen family circumstance. Uh, but he does support all four principles of GVAT's housing platform and looks forward to working with GVAT to implement them in the near future and wanted to just send his regards and make note of that. Thank you. And so for each municipality, we will draw the names of the candidates from a hat to determine who will go first. And each candidate will be asked two short yes or no questions and then given two minutes to respond to our platform. Sonia. She's right here. Ah. Ask in, my, in my peripheral, Sonia, uh, <laughs> the lovely Sonia, everyone, a round of, a, a round of applause for Sonia. Um, <laughs> Sonia will be keeping time and uh, we'll let you know when you have 15 seconds to wrap up your remarks. Uh, so take note, uh, she will hold up a red folder uh, to indicate you have 15 seconds left. So we are starting with Saanich. Do you want to draw a short line? Yeah, let's, uh, let's just move this podium a little bit to oh, the yeah, side. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I've sanitized the mic, but I think the mayoral candidates are going to keep their masks on. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Did someone there leave their pen? Is this your pen? That's my pen. Okay, sorry. <laughs> These are props. <laughs> we have an entire production budget for this. Yes. Okay, so it's Saanich, Victoria, then Esquimalt. Sounds good. Okay, well, you know, the suspense is killing me. Okay, I'm not looking. Okay. Dun, 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 the first dun, dun. up is Fred Haynes. Welcome up. Do you want me to do Fred? Sure. Okay. Welcome, Fred. Okay, so you've seen the platform, yes. Uh, if elected, do you commit to working with your council and staff on implementing these actions? Absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> if elected, will you meet with Greater Victoria acting together to work with us on this within the first 100 days? Within the first week. There we go. Do you want to take up to two minutes to tell the audience how? So thank you very much. And Bonice and all everyone else who spoke. She's going to give you a 15 second warning. Do, did I start? You started. Go ahead. <laughs> Let go of the mic. Thank you, Bonice, for sharing. Thank you for the others who shared. If your heart isn't breaking, you haven't heard enough. If your resolve is not firm, you need to learn more. I commit pending re-election to do everything I can to do these plans into practice, and I will live that truth. As a councillor in 2014, 15, and 16, I brought forward more successful resolutions at Saanich Council, the CRD, onto UBCM and FCM on housing than any other councillor in the history of Saanich. As the current mayor, I delivered a mayor's standing committee on housing headed by amazing members of this council who unified our energy to address affordability. More traction on housing than in the history of Saanich. 
As a councillor, I was a member of the Coalition to End Homelessness, and that's where I first met Bernice. And we started, you started the Aboriginal Coalition to End Homelessness, I remember that. I was on the Regional Housing Trust Fund. In my hand here, working with regional mayors, we're already addressing some of these issues. We have a letter here to the minister, Ann Kang, asking them to refinance university campuses so they can build more housing on campus because it's disgusting that students have to live in a van while they're studying secondary education in Canada. As a councillor, we moved a single family rental occupancy from four to six, which is actually seven if you're in a relationship. We have moved mountains in this term. We brought forward garden suites, and we just made a motion that you can have a garden suite and a secondary suite on the same property with a staff report coming. I'm 100% committed, and I promise to be your champion. Come on up, Dean. Dean Murdoch, everyone. Dean Murdoch. Am I? Can you can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Yes. Excellent. Well, you you can. Yes, you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Dean Murdoch, welcome. Thank you. I like that we keep repeating my name. That's very helpful. <laughs> Memorization. <laughs> uh, so I'll be asking you the same questions, same process. Yes. So, if elected. Do you commit to working with your council and staff on implementing these actions? Absolutely. Excellent. And thank you. It is our job to hold you and all of you accountable. So, and to build public support for these actions. Will you commit to meeting with us within the first 100 days if you're elected? Of course. Uh, it sounds like the first week is the expectation, so I'm more than happy to We're going to take the first five days. Who's got the first five days? All right. October 16th? Yeah, okay. okay, we'll see you on the 16th. Yeah, 24 hours. All right, I'm going to get to the second. Uh, so you have two minutes. And uh, you can explain how, and Sonia will let you know when you have 15 seconds left with the red card there. Thank you so much. Thank you to uh, Lauren, Matthew, and Bernice for the very powerful stories you shared with us this evening. Uh, for me, this is such a, a, an issue that affects, well, I think it affects all of us so intimately. I have friends and family who've been forced to leave this community because it's a place that they can no longer afford to call home. Uh, I fear for my kids, they're 10 and 13, and one day they'll be entering the housing market as either renters or buyers, and the reality is that is going to likely be out of reach for them as a possibility as either a renter or a buyer. We need to be working for a stronger future uh, for our kids and our grandkids. We need to ensure that there are homes for everyone, for all incomes and all uh, stages of life here in our community. It is so vital that we work together, and that, I think, is what is so important about this evening's gathering as we have these uh, mayoral candidates that represent the core, this willingness, and I'm, I'll, <laughs> a little bit of foreshadowing in terms of what may come from the Esquimalt and Victoria candidates, this willingness to work together, to shoulder the responsibility together to ensure that we're able to work with senior governments, that we're able, <laughs> yes, that we're able to deliver results for those who are the most vulnerable in our community. Everyone has the right to a home in our community. Every, no one should be forced to leave our community because it's not a place they can afford or where they feel unwelcome. And as the mayor of Saanich, the largest municipality in the capital region, it would be my honor to help lead that charge for regional housing solutions for everyone in our community. Thank you so much for the opportunity to join me this evening. Okay, thank you, Dean. So we're going to uh, oh, thanks. Uh, draw gonna... names for Victoria. Yes, I will do that while you sanitize the microphone. Okie dokie. This is a smooth operation. Can I just yeah. note how uh, much power we have? We've got mayoral candidates willing to meet with us within seconds of being elected. Like, yeah. this is real power, people. This is happening. All right. 
So uh, our first person up for Victoria will be Stephen Andrew. Okay, welcome. Okay, Stephen Andrew. If elected, do you commit to working on these actions? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. It's our job to hold you accountable. If elected, will you meet with GVAT within the first 100 days? Yes, I definitely will. And do you want to take two minutes to address the crowd? I will. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone. It's great to see so many people here. Wow, it's the first time I actually turned around. It's amazing. We're clearly here because we all believe in the same thing, that we need homes, and we need them immediately, as quickly as we can. And that is something that I would like to see. As a former homeless person, I lived on the streets of Toronto for a year and a half. I know how desperate uh, we, ne we need homes and how difficult it is to pull yourself out of that. And it affects your mental health, it affects your well-being, it affects your, uh, your vision of yourself and the world around you. And I've heard so many times over my many years as a journalist when I've been covering this issue that this is a choice and I think that that is absolutely not the case. I believe nobody knows how far they, they go. I think that we need to, we need to take really strong action. Uh, I think that we can do this, and as uh, former mayors have said, we need to do it on a regional basis. When you look at the housing stars for 2021, you look across the region, some municipalities are actually adding housing, others are not reaching that level. We need to work together. This is not a scramble issue, it's not an Oak Bay issue, it's not a central sandwich issue. It is a human rights issue, and we need to stand up and make sure that we're all following that. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen Andrew. Thank you. Okay, we'd like to ask Marianne Alto to come on up. I'll, I'll do the first bit. We, we had a bit of a rehearsal, but this is like pure energy from you folks, so thank you. Uh, so, Marianne, uh, would, if elected, would you commit to working with your council and staff on implementing these actions? Yes. Excellent. And uh, it is our job to hold you accountable and to build the public pressure needed to see these in place. Would you commit to meeting with us within the first 100 days if elected? Yes. Excellent. Would you like two minutes to... Sure. Uh, sure. Thank you. There is no issue facing the City of Victoria and the Capital Regional District greater than housing. No person should be told that they cannot stay or come home and live under a roof. The municipalities around the CRD have extraordinary powers to create policies and tools that can make this happen. And GVAT has set it out here perfectly. This platform, this platform is my platform. And if you go to it, you will see every action here either specifically identified or implied in different language. That's because what GVAT has laid out thoughtfully and carefully and in response to a great deal of public input and difficult conversations is a plan of action. Everything that is on those displays can be accomplished in the next four years. And we should all hold each other and whoever is in power municipally to this account, because I believe that it is absolutely doable. Let me talk about just one piece. It's the piece about renters. The City of Victoria has made some really profound and quite unusual policies around protecting renters, but it does not go far enough. The pieces that GVAT has laid out are easily achievable through simple policy changes. And the other aspects of the rewards and incentives to ensure that what is built is the right type of housing in the right place for every person is entirely within our grasp. 
This plan is Victoria's plan. And with your help, we will make it happen. Thank you, Marianne Alto. Okay, we are on to Esquimal. Uh, I'm building suspense. This is. Can we get the organ going? <laughs> Maybe some Phantom of the Opera. Uh, all right. First up for Esquimalt is Sonia Gracie. Excellent. Come on up, Sonia Gracie. Okay, Sonia, yep. if elected, do you commit to working with your council and staff to implement these actions? I do. Excellent. Oh, we're getting married. I know, we're in a church. Okay. This is happening. <laughs> it's the right spot. Uh, it's our job to hold you accountable and build public support. Will you commit to work meeting with us within your first 100 days if elected? Absolutely. Great. Do you want to take two minutes? I do. And I am going to follow my notes because I want to make sure I hit all my spots. I want to start by acknowledging not only the current day Lekwungen people, the Coast Salish, the Kwakwakiwak, the New Chalneth um, uh, folks that are here tonight and that live and have lived in these lands for time immemorial. I'm a white, a white settler of Irish and Austrian ancestry and I say this because for many generations my family and myself have been benefiting from colonization. I'm running for the mayor of Esquimalt because I want to ap apply that privilege, the privilege that I have towards equity in our communities. I'm a registered nurse and I'm the team lead of Her Way Home, which is a service that provides wraparound service for women who are in active substance use and experiencing homelessness and other forms of structural violence. I'm running for mayor because I'm stepping from activism into pol political power in order to make these changes and to apply my, my knowledge and my, my passion to these commitments that we're making here this evening. I'm thrilled to have my candidacy endorsed by groups and individuals working for social and ecological justice, many of whom are here tonight, the Homes for Living, BCGEU. Housing is a basic human right, and just this evening before I came here, there was a woman on my front lawn, quite literally, with nowhere to go, and I spent my evening trying to figure out somewhere for her to go, and to this moment, she's without somebody. And I look at my children that are 10 and 15 and I think about how close that is to my lived reality as a single mom. Taking action on housing and climate change is not only necessary, it is critical. It is our moral obligation. It requires willingness and courage to challenge the colonial ways that we do things. It requires everyone in this room, all of us, to work together and I'm so damn grateful to the people that have come together Thank you, oh, was that 15 seconds? <laughs> to <laughs> invite us into this room to share our commitments, and I look forward to working together on creative solutions and to kick and butt on these commitments we've made tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia Gracie. Thank you. And we'd like to call up Barb Desjardins. All right. Thank you for joining us, Barb. Uh, so, if elected, do you commit to working with your council and staff on implementing the actions? Absolutely do. Excellent. And it's our job to hold you accountable to make sure that we have the public pressure for you to uh, put these into, uh, into action. So, do you commit to meeting with us within the first 100 days if elected? Absolutely do. Can I get you on speed dial? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, trying to up the others. Right? We uh, absolutely... Uh, do you want two minutes to address the audience? I do. Thank Excellent. you. I want to thank the organizers, GVAT, for this opportunity for the mayoral candidates. I'm sad that everyone couldn't participate in this because it is important not only for mayors but for councils as well i want to thank those who have told their stories uh, they are gut-wrenching and 
We look at people and they look the same as the next person, but we know there's a lot of suffering going on out there. I want to say that your platform is easy to commit to because it's common sense. It is absolutely filling in some of the things that many of us have been working through, but you've added to it. Esquimalt 10 years ago was not growing, and it started to grow, and it's growing fast now. We've added 2,700 uh, proposed units to our community in the last few years. That's a lot of growth. More than half of that is in rental. But you've added more, and this, these are things that we need to work at, like looking after those who are being displaced because of this growth. And I appreciate your platform, and I am very interested and committed to working toward it in the township of Esquimalt. And I thank you for laying out some of the areas that we have yet to uh, uh, succeed on. So my commitment is absolutely yes, let's work toward housing everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've got time for that dance number you wanted to do. Oh, yes. We're a little bit ahead of schedule. All right, I'm going to get my tap shoes on. <laughs> uh, I just want to say we thank you to the candidates who came here tonight for committing to these actions. Um, and uh, for working with us and we and for supporting our vision for housing for all. We know that this isn't something that only one municipality can take on and that's why we wanted to get as many candidates for mayor as possible to attend tonight, time permitting, obviously we can't have everyone, we'd be here all night and you know, we've got lives, but this is a start and we know that with these municipalities we can reach out to other municipalities that aren't here today and we can go to those and we can get commitments and we can share the solutions that are working and they're working in other in other places in bc as well as other places in north america and parts of the world and we need to continue to add this pressure and so thank you uh, we do uh, have uh, the council candidates here as well, and we know that this isn't something only mayors can implement. We need to have all the support in place to ensure that there are teams working together to make housing a reality for everyone and that is livable for everyone. And the mayor and council candidates who are here will be around for folks if you have questions or, or want to talk after the event. Um, and so we encourage folks, if you do uh, want to talk to the candidates in your municipality, stick around, find them. And uh, this basically takes us to the end of our, our program. Yeah. And we are, yeah, we were ahead of schedule, so we could... Uh, yeah, you want to do it? You yeah, do and I, I had a soliloquy planned for the third act. <laughs> huh. Excellent. And just to note the kind of pressure we can put, not just on those in the room today, but to those outside of these halls in uh, positions of power, decision makers. We have 300 people here with us in this room tonight. And another, yeah, yeah, 300. And 77 at home. Yeah, 77 of you sticking through on the live stream. We are so glad that you chose to watch this event tonight, to be here with us, mm -hmm. to show the support that is out there for these solutions. So thank you. So maybe we could ask everyone a couple of things. Make a plan to vote on October 15th. Uh, we want to ask you to take out your phones right now. 
Yes. We, or you guys are already on your computers. We have a petition up here on the screen. If you go to this uh, link, the tiny URL. Sign our petition. Add your name. Share it far and wide. Show your support for the Homes for All platform. Yes. And uh, encourage others to sign up if they weren't able to be here today so that they can participate in future actions because it's not just us being here tonight that will get this done. It is showing up over and over and over again for the people who matter, the people who aren't able to be here um, because this, this is how we move forward. Ooh, this is how we get it done. Speaking of showing up over and over and over again, Put in your calendar, if you're in the city of Victoria, November 3rd, show up at the city of Victoria to support whoever is elected mayor uh, for the inauguration. And if you're in Esquimalt, Saanich, or Oak Bay, show up on November 7th to support whoever your mayor will be. And if you've already had your phone out to sign the petition, go to your calendar. Put those dates in your calendar. <laughs> OK, folks. So. You know, my favorite part of church, there's a lot of church people here who will get this. My favorite part was when you got to turn around and shake hands with everyone. You got to shake hands. So can we, can we do consent only? Hugs, high fives, fist bumps with your neighbor? Great. Okay. Before you run out the door, we just want to thank everyone. Yes. Thank you. So thank you all.